What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Blazers Uprise post game show sponsored by Manta Sleep Mask. The Blazers today lose their home opener to the Orlando Magic 102 97. It was a competitive game, but also an extremely frustrating one, all the same. And in this in this post game show, I'm going to get into some of my frustrations with some of the veterans on this team, as well as some of the bright spots in this game. As the Blazers, playing without Anthony Simons, uh, are not able to get the job done. And this was a game they really could have used them as they only put 97 points on the board. Shooting 9 for 32 from three-point line, 28%. 35 for 88 from the field, which is under 40%. Not good efficiency numbers, but they did have a chance. Felt like they were perpetually battling uphill all game long. And just were not able to close out that final run as they lose by five hopefully everybody's having a good night i will be joined in a bit by crushables as eric has tonight off he has other things to attend to and uh yeah we got we got crushables it's gonna be interesting to see what he has to say regarding a game like this because uh, i'm pretty frustrated i know eric would have been extremely frustrated with a game like this this is the type of game that drives eric crazy uh so you know it'll be interesting to see what crushables how Crushables feels about things, but uh, shout out to him for joining us today. Uh, chat, what are your thoughts on this game? How are you feeling about this team 0-2 to start the season? Um, just what are your thoughts? You know, I know people are probably going to overreact to Scoot. I know people are probably going to be mad at Chauncey. I'm mad at Chauncey. Uh, but leave me your thoughts in the, in the chat, and I'll start off with that uh, until we get... Brady in here uh this this game was just just the veterans on this team are frustrating and I'll start off this stream by saying this I understand that young guys are going to make mistakes and young guys need experience young guys need to develop young guys are going to turn the ball over like they're young guys they don't have much experience when it's veterans making silly mistakes it's worse because they're veterans they should be leading by example as to what to do on the floor, not showing these young guys, hey, we can screw up too. Don't feel too bad. You're a rookie. I've been in the league for years, and, and look at me. Um, Jeremy Grant, extremely frustrated in this game. Robert Williams, uh, a, a bit frustrated on the defensive end of this game. I'm just curious what you guys think before I really go in on too much, and, uh, you know, Thibault didn't really do much. Just the veterans on this team are a bit disappointing. DeAndre Ayton ends up having a better game than he did in his Blazer debut, so I guess that's a positive. Scoot ended up getting going early, which is also a positive. Seemed to have found a rhythm, knocked down a three. You love to see that, but the problem is he couldn't keep that rhythm because he ended up in foul trouble. He ended up in foul trouble and could not stay on the floor. Uh, ended up with five fouls in this game, had his minutes cut down because of it. Three fouls in the first half. Uh, Scoot fouls too much. He just simply fouls too much. He's over aggressive. And on the day, the rookie, seven points, five turnovers, three rebounds, two assists, three for 12 from the field, one for five from three. I think Scoot Henderson's first two games are the dose of reality that maybe some Blazer fans needed that were expecting a little too much going into the season. Uh, it's going to be, there's going to be growing pains and it's going to be rough. And there's no guarantee that he's a superstar, but we can still hope, right? Like he's a very high caliber prospect and nothing through two games is going to change that at all. He has some things he needs to work through. He has some weaknesses that make things difficult for him at the NBA level that once he fixes, he'll be fine. Uh, I actually recorded a whole video about Scoot going into like just my thoughts on his first game. Didn't end up dropping it, but I'll go into that on, on this post game show. Like what, what the main problem is for him right now. Tamani Kamara plays 23 minutes off the bench. 0 for four, two points, four rebounds, three assists. Made a couple nice passes though. Uh, and was active defensively. Like, he's the type of player whose style of play I like. There's going to be games where he misses a couple three-point shots and misses a couple shots around the rim. Like, he's a he's a rookie, too. I know he's older than a Scoot Henderson, but he's also a rookie. But the little things are what this team is lacking 
they're they're just lacking little things. They're lacking grit. They're lacking toughness. They're lacking um, passing ability. They're lacking um, the ability to close out. The ability to contest shots. Like all the little things. This Blazer team is just brutal in. Uh, in that, I wish I could say it's just because they're young, but even some of the veterans, man, uh, Robert Williams, the third for the second game in a row, uh, left his guy to go double a guy that was around the post area who was completely cut off and bottled up. Sharp played great defense on Markel Fultz in a possession and Robert Williams just stopped paying attention to his guy and started looking at Markel Fultz and his guy was Mo Wagner who just cuts to the rim and gets a wide no, he didn't even cut to the rim. He caught the ball at the three-point line and was so open. He caught the ball at the three-point line, looked around for half a second, then just drove and cocked back a tomahawk dunk. No contest, no defense whatsoever. Speaking of Mo Wagner in this game, 22 minutes, 17 points, 8 for 8 from the field. For Mo Wagner. He's the worst Wagner. He's not the, he's not the better Wagner. He's not Franz Wagner. He's, he's Mo Wagner. Absolutely eviscerated the Blazers today. This is the second game in a row where a uh, role-playing center has looked kind of like a star against the Blazers. Last game was Avicha Zubac. I probably didn't say his name right, but he had 20 points, 12 boards. This game, Mo Wagner, 17 points on 8 for 8 shooting. Robert Williams the third defensively was just rough. And he's rusty, so like I, I'll give him time. But man, like reaching when he shouldn't, out of position, like he, he's able to block shots and deflect some passes, but dude, I don't know what it is, but I'm starting to feel like it doesn't matter who we get defensively, even if we get a guy who's a former all-defensive caliber guy, he, he like we're going to turn that player into a bad defender somehow. That's how it feels. Because Matisse Thibault is one of those former all-defensive guys, and... Pfft, does he help our defense at all? I said it on last post-game show, and I'm saying it again on this post-game show. Like, does he help our defense at all? I don't know. Here's the thing. The Blazers only give up 102 points, so you could sit here and say, oh, what do you mean the defense? It was, it was fine. I felt like the Magic missed a lot of open shots. A lot of open shots. They're not a good three-point shooting team. I felt like the majority of their 28 three-point attempts were wide open. Franz Wagner had a ton of just completely wide open looks. Shoots three for nine, 33%. Like, okay, that's fine for him. But he should have shot a lot better given how quality some of his looks were straight away. Uh, and then the Magic Miss 11 free throws. They don't shoot great from the free throw line. Blazers sent him to the line 32 times. Um, defensively, this game was a bit frustrating. There were some positive moments. Uh, I thought Sharp looked better defensively today than he looked in preseason, than he looked in summer league, than he looked last year. Like, he seems more engaged, which is great. He wasn't giving up on plays. <laughs> and it's funny because the microcosm of this game is like Sharp cuts off Markel Fultz, plays great defense on him, and Robert Williams overhelps and leaves Mo Wagner wide open, who ends up getting a dunk out of it. Just strange. Just strange. Um... Kamara, I thought when he was on Cole Anthony, he struggled, but otherwise was fine. Aiton, I thought, did an okay job defensively. It's just, it's tough to be happy with the defensive effort. A lot of people just look at the result and base this game off the result. Like, we only gave up 102 points. The defense was fine this game, but... You got to look at the types of shots they were getting because if you play a better offense or a better shooting offense, they're probably scoring 120. Second half was better um, than the first half. Like, second half wasn't anywhere near as bad. There was a stretch there that didn't make much sense in the fourth quarter. Scoot Henderson had five fouls and they were trying to hide him. They put him on Gary Harris. But then every time Gary Harris ran to set a screen for Paulo Bancaro, the Blazers were auto-switching Scoot Henderson onto Paulo Bancaro when Scoot Henderson had five fouls. And we're going to have to talk about Chauncey Billups. Today. We're going to have to talk about Chauncey. But in those possessions, I don't think Bancaro scored. Like, I think there was 
three or four possessions where the Blazers just automatically switched Scoot onto Paulo Bancaro despite Scoot having five fouls. And Scoot actually did a decent job. So, offensively, this, this team is going to struggle. Uh, they might be the worst passing team in the entire NBA. When your starters are in the front court are Matisse Thibel, Jeremy Grant, DeAndre Ayton, in terms of passing the ball, that's not good. That's not good. Like, none of those players are bad, but all those players are subpar at their position when it comes to passing the ball. Maybe Ayton's okay for a center, but he's a center, right? Like, that's not really his responsibility. So... Not going to take a shot at Aiton's passing, but like, but Jeremy Grant, Matisse Thibel. It's not like Aiton is somebody that's throwing dimes. Scoot passing the ball has been a problem for him that I don't think people saw coming. Five turnovers, two assists. Like he has not really been able to create for others his first two NBA games. Sharp, like he's made some strides, but you can make the case that the best passer in the starting lineup today was Shaden Sharp. That's probably not a good thing. And then off the bench, you got like Tamani Kamara, Jabari Walker. Like those guys aren't really going to pass the ball. Brogdon can. Williams is a solid passer for a center. But this team today, this team today, chat, had more turnovers than assists. More turnovers than assists. They had 15 assists and 16 turnovers. Now, part of it is they're playing super stagnant offense, super stagnant basketball. And that falls back to Chauncey at some point. Like, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for Chauncey another year. Uh, This is kind of like put up or shut up time for him. And offensively, it's been a mess. And part of the sloppiness slash bad passing comes out of situations where the offense is stagnant. They're going up against the shot clock. And they get stuck and then have to throw the ball to someone. And this offense just gets bogged down. But that's kind of been the common theme under Chauncey Billups is the offense a lot of times will get bogged down. Now, instead of just being able to throw the ball to Damian Lillard 32 feet away from the hoop and he'll hit a step back three with a hand in his face, now you're throwing the ball to Scoot, Sharp. Sharp was 9 for 23 tonight. I thought he had a fine game. You know, efficiency wasn't really there, but he was the only one that could really do anything offensively outside of DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, that's why you got that's why you need a guy like Dame that you know. I mean, I shouldn't have to explain it, but that's why you need a guy like Dame that can that can score the way he does because at times you're going to have to bail out the offense and you got to have guys that can bail out the offense when they get stuck. Hopefully Shane Sharp can become that guy. Hopefully Scoo Henderson can become that guy. And hopefully the Blazers can find like a front court player that can do it. Anyway, as I said, we'll have Brady, a.k.a. Crushables, joining us here in a second. But I, I, as far as Chauncey goes, I am... I'm done making excuses for Chauncey. Last year, all year, I made excuses for Chauncey. And I said... I'm still going to give him time to figure it out. This is his first real season because last year Dame was hurt. You know, his first season coaching Dame was hurt and it was a mess and then they tanked, right? So last year was like, I'm going to give Chauncey a chance to figure it out. Like, I think he's trying to, you know, teach them how to play out of freelance situations. That's why the offense is so stagnant and nobody's moving. Like, he's trying to teach them how to move off the ball, how to play outside of set offenses. That's why there's no structure to the offense. And that's something that the team had to learn how to do is play out freelance situations. And it was like, okay, well, that that's why it looks so bad. He's trying to play the long game and get these guys to be able to move properly, set off ball screens, you know, basically run an offense without being in a set play. But it didn't get better. 
That was the problem. It did not get better last year. Now he has completely new players and he has his guys, quote unquote, and he had a full training camp. And this is what the offense looks like in terms of structure. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I mean, what I've realized. <laughs> there's a comment chat. It's hilarious that that sponsor is a blindfold, right? Yeah. Shout out Matt to Sleep Mask. Promo code Uprise. 10% off. Link in description. I misspelled the link. I said oink in description. Whoops. Oh, well. They're going to like having their, their sleep mask up there for the entire stream, I think. So, we're, I think we're good. Um, <laughs> Eric looking like the Blazers offense right now. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing I've realized about Chauncey Billups' offense. Also, let me, let me let me get my let me get my webcam like full screen here. I don't know when Brady will be joining us yet. Can it even go full screen here? Nope. I need to crop it. Let's crop that and let's crop the bottom. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. Here's the thing I've realized about Chauncey Billups' offense. He doesn't have, like, more than one action. All of his sets is, like, one action. If that's not there, it's a, it's a pick and roll or it's a handoff or it's ISO. And then if they're not able to score out of that, then everybody's standing around. <laughs> that's literally what his offense is. It'll be like, you know, we talked about it. They ran it last year for Dame. They ran it opening night for Anthony Simons. Now Anthony Simons is gone too. So they were running it for like Malcolm Brogdon and Sharp. This this play where the ball's on one side of the court, about 30 feet away from the rim, and the big man in the center of the court screens away for the guard who comes towards the ball and catches the ball, hopefully with a head of steam downhill, and they can make a play. The problem is, we run it so much that defenses see it coming. The problem is, we don't run enough sets that defenses don't have to scout much, and that's one of the main things they're scouting. Like, watch out for this play. It's one of, like, the three things, three sets that they run. Like, the Blazers will run horns. And the Blazers will run whatever you call that, that screen away. Crushable's been ready for 10 minutes. I've been waiting for the text, my guy. I've been staring at my phone. Oh, you texted me. Oh, I don't know what my phone's doing. My phone is like the Portland Trail Blazers offense today. Missing things. So let's get, let's get Crush on here. <laughs> you you <laughs> you like my uh phone analogy bro i've literally been sitting here for 10 minutes just staring at my phone like where's crushables i'm waiting for him yeah ready like, for it i texted like 10 minutes <laughs> earlier and then uh you're just going to your little rant, so I was just listening, and I was like, oh, okay. And then you're like, I'm not re I'm not sure when he's joining us. I was like, oh, I guess he didn't see my – I thought yeah, I saw yeah, you looking at your bad, phone, too. No, you're good. My man, I see you in chat. I've been ready for 10 minutes. Crap, my bad, my bad. <laughs> so, okay. I, I'm i going to finish my rant about the offense, and then I just want you to give, like, your uh, synopsis on this game, and you can go wherever you want because I'm curious. Uh, just kind of what you felt about this game. I'm a little bit in ramp mode. You know, I should have, like, I saw this coming and I was ready for it. But just kind of the way they played today irked me a little bit. Um, but, like, offensively, man, uh, just just too much, like, one action, it gets blown up, and then everybody stands around and it's iso ball. And it's like, get the ball to Jeremy. He's going to try and go one on three. And you're not a Jeremy fan, so I'll kind of let you handle that. I haven't got in on him yet. Um... <laughs> But, yeah, I just, the offense just has no structure. They don't run much of anything. And then they, if they're not in a set, everybody is just ball watching. It's basically courtside seats, but for the players on the court, because they're literally doing nothing. It's just watching whoever has the ball and standing around. Um, so, what's what's your thoughts on this game? You know, it was competitive at least. I guess we can yeah. be happy about that, but also uh, a little bit frustrating at the same time. And the fact that they just battle back and then 
forget how to play basketball for three minutes and then battle back <laughs> and then forget how to play basketball again. Yeah, so uh, you asked me to come on tonight because Eric wasn't going to be here. So in preparation for something I don't ever do is I actually wrote down notes. So I had some things Ooh, to talk look, about. You're so. more prepared than me. Even. Yeah, I was like, okay, I got to really lock into this game and start, you know, what am I taking away from what we're watching right now? And, uh, you know, I went first quarter, second, third, fourth. First thing I wrote down is Grant Isos need to die. Like they need <laughs> to stop happening because they're just not good at all. Like uh, I love it when he's off ball shooting threes. That's fine. We could do that. And then sometimes you could attack the basket. That's fine. But the ISO pivot, pivot, mid range, like that was happening, I think, twice in the first quarter. Um, it, that, that's an, I'm, I'm over the ISO, Jeremy. That's one thing I'll say about Jeremy Grant. Um, so that, I'm ready for that to die. That was the first I, thing I wrote down. <laughs> yeah, I am 1000% with you. He was very frustrating in this game. Like, the Blazers seem to have good energy starting off. And he had two ISO possessions right off the bat where he just like dribble, 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 crossover, crossover, doesn't go anywhere, dribble, dribble, pull up mid-range contested. Mm -hmm. And then he had a play where in transition he was at the rim with Jalen Suggs, who's like a guard, coming at him. And he just jumps out of the way, doesn't even contest it, lets Jalen Suggs <laughs> dunk. Like, dude, you're killing me. Yeah, I mean, it, it's safe to say the man got his bag and... Well, we'll see how long he's here, right? Like, I don't know. It, it sucks because, like, Grant, it just feels like sometimes he's hijacking the offense, and it, it's going to be something that continues for the rest of the season, unfortunately, until maybe he can be moved. So, you know, but, what's frust you know what's frustrating about it for me is, like, sometimes he has to because it gets stagnant in a way, but it's yeah. like, just read the defense because there will be a time where, he'll, like, there's a lot of times where he beats his defender or gets gets into the paint enough that he draws another defender and just doesn't make the right pass. And it's like, he's the type of offensive player we need for when the offense gets stagnant and you need to throw the ball to somebody to go bail it out and like generate a shot for some, someone. The problem is that someone is always him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, another thing I wrote down is like, Scoot, I was glad that he was like attacking right away, but like, and then he like gets the I forget it was I don't know if it was after his three or one of the uh, baskets he scored, but for like no reason at all he just got like super aggressive on Franz Wagner and like picked up like a stupid foul. It mm. felt like I thought they were gonna call the foul on him a long time ago. Like it was cool to see him like kind of intense, but like I just felt like it was over the top. Uh, so he got you know three fouls very early in the first quarter, so we didn't even see him the entire second quarter. Uh, so that was pretty unfortunate as well. For made his first three in the first quarter as well. Um, yeah, it was just, I don't know, man. Scoot, <laughs> I'm not ready. I, d I don't want to go as far as to say some people are saying Scoot's a bust. Like, that's crazy to say, uh, you know, right away. But I will say, last year, you know, Shaden Sharp, got, Shaden Sharp got off to a good start right away. So maybe it's good to see Scoot struggling off the bat. And then maybe he'll turn up as the season goes along, which I expect that to be the case. Uh, but... Yeah, unfortunately, Scoot has been pretty disappointing so far. I will say that. I will say this. Like, the most translatable skill to the NBA, in a way, is three-point shooting. Mm -hmm. And Sharp, if he was not shooting threes as well as he was to start last season, he would have been awful. Like, I think a big part of it was just the first month and a half, he was shooting, like, 46% from three or something absolutely absurd. And that's the problem with Scoot is he doesn't have that you know, three point shooting yet. And actually his three point shooting is so much of a struggle that it just doesn't, he can't get into the paint enough. And when he gets into the paint, like his, his defender is still with him and yep. everything becomes clogged. Um, the thing is with Dame is like, you go run, you go set him a screen 30 feet away from the rim and he'll beat both defenders in the screen on the screen before he's even within the three-point line. And then he has all this space to, like, make a decision, all this time to make a decision. Floater, you know, sometimes he'll get all the way, sometimes he'll make the kick-out pass, but he has this, like, long window because you have to play him out so far that when he's able to beat his defense, it's above the three-point line. The problem is with Scoot, all these defenders are, are, like, standing at the free-throw line if he's at the top of the arc, and he's not shooting with confidence some, some of the times when he should probably just say, screw it and pull... And then when he does shoot, he's just, he's not a good three-point shooter yet. He was one for five today. Uh, you know, it was like, at least he made a three, but he's one for five. That's not going to be good enough. You're not going to get people to guard you that way. So 
that's the problem with him right now uh is is he can't beat his defender and even when he does he's already like into the paint he doesn't have any time to make a decision Mm -hmm. side note uh scoot's line earlier today was at like 12 and a half and that was before and i took it before before knowing that anthony was going to be out four to six weeks so once that you know news dropped i was like oh 12 and a half that sounds free like that's what scoot you know anthony not playing anymore that sounds like it's gonna be easy and Mm -hmm. uh no it was not the case at all (laughs) because i I imagine that line moved once you know the anthony news dropped because he was probable for this game if i remember correctly yeah, it, it looked good early on. He had that quick seven off the mm-hmm. bat. It was like, oh, this is what we were waiting for. It yep. didn't score again for the rest of the game. It, yeah, the fouls did not help at all. That really sucked. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, who knows how, you know, maybe the second quarter could have gone better. He could have kept playing the first quarter. Maybe got momentum going. Well, it, just yeah, just really sucks seeing him left. foul that quickly. Really was unfortunate. Yeah. Um. What else you got on that notepad? I'm not- you, this is such <laughs> Eric's things to do because Eric has like a crazy notepad. Yeah. He used to like keep track of picks against the spread on his notepad. I think like he has a yeah. I, I, I want to see the notepad. The, I, I'm using my phone for this, but uh, the notepad is OG. I like it. The Eric Brandt notepad will go in the Blazers Uprise Hall of Fame. So yeah, I agree. <laughs> Second quarter, uh, there was one play I really liked, and this is moving on to DeAndre Ayton, where I thought all day DeAndre Ayton, I believe, was driving down to the lane, and uh, I don't remember exactly who it was, whether it was Cole Anthony or Suggs, or maybe it was somebody else. I thought 100,000% this was about to be a charge. Like, there was going to be a charge called easily, and, like, Ayton hit a nice sidestep to mm-hmm. uh, to Jabari to avoid the charge. Like, I saw the play coming. I was like, that is going to be a charge. Like, that's <laughs> And then... Yeah, uh, Aiden like sidesteps. So I thought that was cool. Uh, Sharp getting great looks. I thought all night he had great looks. Um, obviously some of them went in, some of them didn't. Uh, he started to take over there a little bit in the second quarter. I feel like Malcolm Brogdon dribbles the ball a little too much sometimes. Um, yeah. And then uh, Paulo. I, I feel like the momentum changed once Paulo missed two free throws and then got his own rebound and went right back to the free throw line. So that was like a big momentum shift, I feel like, in the second quarter there because we had that little run going. And then Paulo gets fouled. He goes free throw line, misses two. And then some, I, I don't know what happened, but like someone didn't grab – I think it was Sharp who didn't grab the rebound, mm-hmm. went under his feet, and Paulo got it back. And that's when the momentum started swinging back to the Magic's way, uh, at least at the end of the second quarter where we were down like seven, I think, going into half or something like that. Or, yeah, I believe, or something like that. I can't remember exactly when what it was. Yeah, we were down – Eight. We were down. Yes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. This was a this was a slow paced game too. Like I'm looking at fast break points. We had seven fast break points. I I completely got this team wrong, it seems like, and saying I think they're gonna be playing at one of the fastest paces in the league because we can't do anything on a fast break. I think some of it starts with like you gotta get stops, you gotta force turnovers, but like we don't force open court turnovers mm-hmm. because we don't play aggressive defense. And that's where it's like Chauncey, when he first became coach, hedged everything, trapped a lot of things and said, I want to be aggressive. I want to be the team that gives other teams headaches defensively. Now he has the type of roster to maybe try that and he doesn't. Instead, it's we just ran drop ball game. We went under a ton of screens, even on shooters. And then the only other thing we did was just switch, automatically switch into mismatches. Like, the, that part of his coaching is driving me crazy right now, what they're running defensively, because it's it's not... It doesn't make sense to have a young, really athletic team and run <laughs> as passive of a defense as you can while saying, we want to get out and run. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Uh, side note, they are, selling, are they, they are saying that the Clippers is still in the title, uh, apparently. Oh, no. Whoops. (laughs) See, okay, so before the stream, like, my computer was being all slow. Thank you, chat. Um, My computer was being all slow and took a while to set this up. I was rushing everything, and normally when that happens, I overlook something. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Portland Trailblazers versus Orlando Magic. I mean, we still still got over 300 people in here, so I think that's pretty good. You know, no Magic fans probably, but, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, also, it was we, Eric who uh, pointed out in chat, it looks like. Eric so. is always the one who, like, is able to <laughs> notice that type of stuff and, yeah. and get my back. So, uh, shout, out to, shout out to Eric. Um, also, leave a like on the stream. Get the stream to... Let's get the stream to 150. Uh, yeah, the defense is driving me crazy, man. Um, Absolutely. 
Yeah, I mean, I just I think Ch- I think we're all kind of aware that Chauncey just we kind of had our suspicions, and I think we're I think we've kind of ex- I mean it's only two games so far, so maybe there's some people out there still willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but. I mean, it's probably safe to say Chauncey is not the right man for the job, I feel like. Just but, want to see something different. Just, just yeah. That's the thing. Is like, if it was going to be different, why does it look the exact same? You know what I mean? Like, if they had a whole entire training camp, which Chauncey said was a defensive training camp, wouldn't we see something different compared to last year? Wouldn't this is the result of a defensive training camp. This is a result of him getting the players he wants. This is the result of him having a young athletic team is this passive of a defense. Like it it would be different if it was going to change in my opinion, like given the way it's the way that he's coached things to start the season. I don't have faith in it being much different 10 games from now, 20 games from now offensively. It's, Still kind of the same sets he ran last year. He didn't adapt his offense at all for his players. He's still running the screen away for a guard, even without Ant, even without Dame. He's still running that, right? And that was kind of a Dame set. He just has shown no adaptability. And man, I, at this point, <laughs> I, I feel kind of ridiculous saying this because I've always been preaching patience with Chauncey. But at this point, like I'm all out. <laughs> I'm 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 out on Chauncey. Do you think uh, that, uh, you know, Joe Cronin and Jody Allen are going to give him as much time as they – I know someone was asking, you know, how often do coaches get fired midseason, and it happens quite a bit sometimes, uh, but I don't know if it would happen 